Here I have the Nintendo Zap Zapper circuit open, and I've been having a problem. Whenever I click the trigger, it uh, it behaves funny. It uh, will only trigger a little bit, uh, and then it will go back to normal. And what I have right here is the uh, the output value of what that, that trigger value is. So you can see if I click it, it will go to 1 and then 0, and sometimes it will even click when I uh, like release, which is completely the wrong behavior. I mean, well, how is this possible? So over here, I used a scope, and I probed out that pin, and sure enough, when I go down, it actually triggers. See? Going down and up, and everything's fine, and it stays down, and it stays up. And I just could not figure it out, until I found out that it's actually reading the one pin next door. And the two pins were capacitively coupling so that it would trigger the one to go down just enough to make it so that the circuit would not work. It's actually capacitively coupling between that pin right there, that wire, and this pin slash wire right there so that I'm getting the, the voltage drop low temporarily and then back up and if there's any debouncing it goes and gets triggered again. So it turns out this whole huge complicated problem all I have to do is just use the right pin in software. So, as you can see, I have finally switched over to uh, port C4 instead of port C5. So when I click it, it turns on and stays on. When I release, it releases. If I click all the way down, it releases just like it should. It does not trigger back on when I let go. Everything about this is now working. Just kind of goes to show that even though your software may be using the pins, it may kind of sort of be working, the problems can lie in all sorts of bizarre places.